Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Teachers Retirement System of the City of New York. Uh, regular board meeting for April 19, 2018. Patricia, would you please call the roll? John Adler. I am here. Thomas Brown. Present. Stacey Kazansky. Present. Raymond Orlando. I'm here. Deborah Penny. George Wilson. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. Okay, next on the agenda is an update from TRS Operations, Davida Conroy. Can I do that for you? Thank you, Patricia. TRS is continuing its ongoing campaign to encourage participation in the Tax Deferred Annuity Program. Our spring campaign for 2018 began with an email blast in late March. We targeted over 5,500 and new 500 new members who joined TRS since last spring, but have not yet enrolled in CDA. In addition, we reached out to over 6,000 members who have recently reached 10 years of membership with TRS and encouraged them to enroll in our TDA or increase their participation. The theme of the spring campaign is Do the Math, TDA Makes Sense. Coverage is also provided in our website and social media and later this spring in our member newsletters. Preparations are underway to produce the member account statements for the first quarter of 2018. Account statements will be available in May for over 126,000 members who are currently in service or on leave. Mailing is expected to occur between May 15th and May 18th. Approximately 16,000 members have opted out of the mailing, choosing to view their statements online only. Also in May, TDA quarterly statements will be available for approximately 55,000 members with TDA deferral status. Mailing is expected to occur in early May. Nearly 5,000 members have opted out of the mailing, choosing to view their statements online only. And finally, the TDA quarterly statement for TDA beneficiary participants will be mailed to a population of approximately 1,000 members at the end of April. Earlier this month was spring recess in the schools and TRS experienced its usual spike in visits to our member services center. Uh, representatives met with 536 members on various retirement and benefit related questions. This was almost double of the number of members served in a regular week. April also marked the beginning of our busy season for retirement application submissions. As of today, we have received, already received 66 applications for July 1st retirement. Thank you. Thank you, Kavita. Um, next is the Executive Director's Report. And the first item is the matter of the next meeting. It has been suggested that the next regular meeting of the Teachers Retirement Board be held on the third Thursday of the month, May 17, 2018. Thank you. Next is the resolution that had been laid over previously um, for the actuary's recommendation for a preliminary year fiscal year 2019 employer contributions to the teachers retirement system of the city of New York. Let's get to the result please. Resolved, the retirement board hereby, is approved, hereby approves a preliminary fiscal year 2019 employer contribution to the teachers retirement system of the city of New York of $3,768,938,967. Okay. Is there a motion to approve uh, the actuary's uh, recommendation for preliminary fiscal year 2019 employer contribution? So moved. Thank you, David. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Tom. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. All opposed, please say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next is the resolution, the actuary's recommendation for a final fiscal year 2018 employer contributions to the teachers' retirement system of the city of New York. Again, please skip to the resolve. Resolve that the employer contribution to the teachers' retirement system of the city of New York for fiscal year 2018 in the amount of $3,888,000,000. I'm sorry. $3,889,000,000. $709,927 
is hereby approved by the retirement board. Uh, so is there a motion to approve the actuary's recommendation for final fiscal year 2018 employer contribution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Following resolution was laid over um, on our March 15th meeting, and it is the adoption of divestment and exclusion policy. The Finance Committee of the Teachers Retirement Board has recommended the following resolution for consideration and adoption by the Board of Trustees. Please skip to the result. Resolve that the Board adopts the attached divestment and exclusion policy for inclusion in the investment policy statements for the qualified pension plan and the variable annuity funds. Uh, so is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, discussion. Yes, I'd like to make a friendly amendment to the divestment and exclusion policy. Yes, sir. On the second page, I'd like the sentence that begins with the board shall uh, yep. to be changed to the board shall also obtain advice from council whether a divestment initiative is consistent with fiduciary standards. Okay, you are the maker of the motion. So yes, I, I will ask you as the maker of the motion, is the amendment friendly? Of course it's friendly. <laughs> I'm smiling. <laughs> okay. So um, so there's a motion on the floor that has been seconded and amended uh, to approve the divestment exclusion policy, including the amended sentence that uh, Dave just read for the record. Any discussion uh, on the amended uh, divestment exclusion policy? Okay, seeing none. Uh, all in favor of the motion to uh, approve the uh, divestment, the uh, the motion to adopt the divestment and inclusion policy, please say as aye. Amended. As amended. As amended. As amended. Yeah. Thank you. As amended. Please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Any abstentions? Okay. Motion carries. Next is the attendance at a conference. Um, be it resolved that the trustees of the Teachers Retirement Board hereby approve the attendance and participation of the Executive Director and or her designees and any interested trustee at the 2018 CEM Global Pension Administration Conference from May 7th through May 10th, 2018. Is there a motion to approve attendance at the 2018 CEM Global Pension Administration so Conference? Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next is also attendance at a conference. Be it resolved that the trustees of the Teachers Retirement Board hereby approve the attendance and participation of the executive director and or her designees and any interested trustee at the National Association of Public Pension Attorneys, NAPA, 2018 Legal Education Conference from June 22nd through June 29th, 2018. Okay, is there uh, a motion to adopt the resolution uh, uh, regarding attendance at the NAPA conference? So moved. Is there second. A second? Thank you. Move and second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion to uh, approve the attendance at the NAPA conference, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Any extension? Motion carries. Okay, next is the calendar. And the first item there would be the matter of approval of the minutes for the March 1st, 2018 TRS investment meeting, the March 2nd, 2018 TRS SIM minutes, the March 15th, 2018 TRS regular board meeting for the month of March 15th, 2018. Um, so just a note, I uh, submitted some um, corrections to the March 1st TRS investment meeting minutes to Liz. You got it. Okay. So um, they're generally just uh, correcting uh, misspellings and typos and that sort of thing, nothing uh, substantive. Uh, so I guess what I would ask for is a motion to adopt 
uh, the three sets of minutes, including the uh, correct change the corrections to the March first uh, uh, TRS investment meeting minutes. So, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion to approve the three sets of minutes, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. So next are the items on the calendar. You all should have received an electronic version of the calendar. Please wave the reading of the calendar. Okay. So is there a motion to approve the calendar uh, as uh, received uh, in the electronic version? So moved. Is there a second? Second. We'll give it to Mr. Dorsey. Uh, any discussion regarding the calendar? Very good. All in favor of the motion to adopt the calendar uh, for April 19th, 2018, please say aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed, please say nay. Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. All right, next is other business before the board. Anyone have any other business to bring to the board? Okay, hearing none. We have questions and comments from the public. Anybody from the public wish to make any uh, comments or ask any questions? Just how wonderful this board is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Public. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, now, we, we have on the agenda an attorney client session. I think well, we need we to. Have an actuary this one, too. Oh. Oh, report for the actuary. We skipped that. Oh my goodness! I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sherry, direct yourself here in the rain. <laughs> the least we could do is hear her out. So um, we have a report from the actuary. <laughs> so even though the contributions have already passed, I'm here to answer any questions. <laughs> the final fiscal year, uh, 2018, the was already passed, but um, there was an increase of 39 million in the preliminary uh, fiscal year 18. Uh, contributions and that was all attributed to recognizing the TDA um, up front uh, so that um, is is now recognized in the contributions. For preliminary fiscal year 19 uh, there was actually a decrease of approximately 82 million. The largest contributing factor to this um, had to do with the rebalancing of the TDA. If you recall this, this was done um, for the first time in, in a while explicitly uh, we did that a few years ago, and we're doing that on an annual basis going forward. Uh, because we are doing that and recognizing it on, uh, up front on an explicit basis by collecting data and actually doing the rebalancing, um, previously it was done implicitly through uh, on the back end by adding a, uh, a assumption onto the liability. Because we're doing it, re recognizing it up front, I was able to be a little bit more conservative on the back end. And uh, take off that assumption, just go back and assumption, assumption. So that's why we see that game. Can I just ask a question so I understand that better, Sherry? <laughs> so um, I know that we have not done the rebalancing between the QPP and the TDA for many years, and we did it, um, I think, a couple, a couple years ago. Couple years ago. And, like, right. and, that, and then we're doing it annually thereafter. But um, when you say we're doing it on the front end, um, is that we're doing the front end for the, for example, for the, for we're doing the front end for fiscal year 2019, is what you said, right? No, ever since well, when I say front end, I mean that we're explicitly collecting the data, explicitly valuing it, so it's part of the liability. Previous to that, we were um, we were making an assumption basically to account for it. And because we are, you know, we're duplicating efforts now, I scale back on the conservatism of the, the assumption. Okay. I mean, so this was, I don't this really was, understand that to be honest. Uh, and, uh, that's why uh, she's an actuary. Uh, I understand. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. I guess which part do you not understand? Well, and right? what I don't understand is, the I think, the front end, back end thing. I mean, what you had said at the time that we did the rebalancing, was that this did not change the valuation at all uh, because it was already um, accounted for in the valuation, even though we hadn't physically transferred the assets right. between the QPP and the TDA. Mm -hmm. Now what we're doing is we're you're calculating it still as you did as the office of the actual year before. Yes. 
but actually doing the fiscal transfer of the assets mm -hmm. each year. And um, so, so, yeah. So it didn't affect the valuation because it, it was incorporated in valuation through an assumption. So either you can. But you're saying now it's no longer an assumption, it's a calculation. Correct, because we're explicitly collecting the data and doing the rebalancing on each year. And so what was the rebalancing for fiscal year, for this past fiscal year? The amount. Yeah, in other words, how much? We did 500 million approximately two fiscal years ago, I believe. Three billion. No, it's a lot bigger than that, yeah. Three billion. Yeah, 3.8 billion. 3.8 billion. Yes. Sorry. To be exact. Do you remember the fainting couches at that time? Yeah. It was pearl clutching. Oh, I know. And then it was supposed to be 500 million annually after that. Right. If, it it was, if it did not, if the 3.9 billion was not done, then it would be 500 million each year going to the Right. Because of the compounding effect. But because we did do that, I think it was in a magnitude of a lot less, like 100 million or even less than that. For the last fiscal year, it was much. It was much okay, yeah, that was, it was like eight million. It was really small. Yes. It was astoundingly small. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm just trying to understand that. But you're saying, how how is it that that astoundingly small transfer resulted in a decrease in eighty two million? So there's other gain losses embedded in it. So that's you know we had some asset gains too. The asset gain was 102 million, so, and then we had um, liability losses. It got offset by a lot of other things. So there are a number of factors right. that went into that. That was just the biggest piece. I see. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions for the actuary on the contributions? Okay, I have a little one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> the last item was a fiscal note report. There was four fiscal notes issued between the last board meeting and this board meeting. Uh, one was a um, extension of the deadline to file for notice of participation for the World Trade Center. Uh, because most people who would have filed have already filed, um, there is a there's no cost to this. It's de minimis cost just to note. This um, proposed legislation extends the deadline from this September 11th to September 11th of uh, 2022. So it's a four year extension. There's also two picture bills. Uh, both of them were for tier four individuals who wanted to be restated to tier one. One of them was an active um, employee, or is an active employee, uh, and that cost uh, generated $98,000 in additional contribution per year if that uh, legislation passed. And then the other individual was a retired uh, individual, and because they are retired, the, the retire cost would be recognized in one year, and that amounted to 285000 The last fiscal note had to do with uh, mandating paraprofessionals into TRS. Uh, it, would, it would mandate 2,400 um, paraprofessionals approximately into TRS because of this legislation, and that would produce an annual cost of approximately 7.7. Any so questions? So it's million or both million per M. <laughs> Considering the contribution only like three point three point five billion. Uh, any uh, questions on the fiscal note report for Sherry? Okay. Anything else in the report, Sherry? No, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so now there are a couple of matters. Yes. Yes, but so we adjourn the meeting and then do our turn client. Is that the right way to do it? I think so. Yes. That that is how we. Okay. All right. So, unless there's any other uh, uh, business for the agenda, I think uh, uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? <coughs> All in favor of the motion to adjourn, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Any abstentions? Okay, motion carried.